there it goes. Um, uh, hi, uh, hi, Melissa. Um, I'm here with Melissa Ede. Um, uh, am I pronouncing your name right? You are, Adi. Yes, Melissa E from the UK. Uh, yeah, Mel Melissa Ede, um, round two uh, Mars One candidate. I understand. Um, so, what uh, inspired you to apply for Mars One? What wouldn't inspire somebody to apply for Mars One? I mean, what an opportunity, Heidi. Some, something so outstanding and amazing to, to make history, to, to overcome challenges that nobody else has ever done in the world. Anybody would be foolish not to apply for something like that. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, uh, how would you um, describe your ideal team for um, living and working on Mars with? My ideal team. Well, that's going to be the other three people that I actually go to Mars with. We're going to be obviously selected to be able to work alongside of each other. Now, I can't say who would be my ideal people to work alongside with at the moment because they haven't met them but hopefully we're going to have a lot in common we've all got the same goal which is to actually colonize Mars and live on Mars now I'm hoping the people are very different from me in many ways because I think life would be so boring if we was all the same and we all had the same ideas I, th I think once, once we're there as long as we can work together peacefully and productively we've, we've overcome a lot now as far as far as our personalities and characters and everything go I think they're going to have to be very different from me to to sort of make me want to know more about them because if they're just like me it's, it's like I'll be looking at a mirror image and I don't want that so I don't, I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say there, but hopefully, as long as we can work together, as long as we can achieve the goals, then they're my ideal people to work alongside with. Awesome. So, um, the next step in the selection process is coming up uh, pretty quick here. Um, can you describe what you've been doing to prepare for it? Obviously, we've got a lot of material to learn, um, which I've been doing. Um, I'm not going to give any secrets away, but I am cramming quite hard. And hopefully I'll be ready for them interviews when they come. I've been training quite a lot uh, physically as well. So my, my standard of my physical, um, generally, I, I'm a lot fitter than when I first applied for Mars One. You know, I'm doing everything possible I can to to give myself the best possible chance in this. And, yeah, I think I'm doing okay, I do, to be honest with you. But we'll find out at the interviews. Right. Uh, so how do you um, feel about all the uh, media attention you've been getting as a uh, Mars One candidate? That's fantastic, Adi, because as you know, two, two of my great passions are, it's obviously Mars One is a big passion of mine now, but also diversity and anti-bullying is a big passion of mine too. I'm transgender, which I, I don't make a secret of, and I do try to make it very visible out there. And all the press and everything is... It's given me that extra chance to, to promote diversity and anti-bullying as well. So, yeah, I'm actually loving the publicity. I know a lot of people aren't that keen on publicity and do shy away from the media, but I've had a lot of media attention the last three years, even before I applied for Mars One. So, yeah, great. You know, keep, keep it coming. It's good for Mars One. It's good for what I believe in. So, yeah. I've got no problem with it, and hopefully there'll be a lot more to come. Cool. Um, uh, so, um, what do you think your involvement uh, will ne mean for the LGBT community? I think one of the biggest things with the LGBT community is visibility. 
Um, the more and more people that get in the media and get in the press and get on the TV, it makes it visible and it makes people aware that they are different, different um, sexualities, different genders and everything else. And I, th I think hopefully the more and more that gets out there, the more and more people get educated and the easier it, be, it becomes for the people who are following in my steps. Awesome. Well, uh, uh, that's all I've got. Uh, do you have anything you want to add, Melissa? Yeah, I think you're doing pretty well yourself with, with the media and everything. How do you feel about it, Heidi? <laughs> oh, um, I haven't done a ton, but uh, <laughs> Uh, I do enjoy it when um, I can can get an interview. I'm a lot more boring than you are, I think. No, 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 no you're not. Not at all. You're, you're a very interesting person, and that's what's got you so far in to run through and everything else, Heidi. Never put yourself down. You should have learned that one by now. <laughs> Thanks, Melissa. That's okay. So how are you preparing yourself then, Heidi? Um, well, I've been going over the um, study material um, and uh, learning as much as I can about Mars and uh, some s stuff like that. What I've read about, yeah, and uh, I do read a lot about the other candidates. Um, like I say, I've got, I've got a big interest in it all. And you're a very educated person anyway, I read. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not admitting to that one, are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> are you very educated? Um, well, I've got an associate's degree in computer networking, um, and I like to read a lot. Um, yeah, so. yeah. You see, that's that's again, that's where we're. You know, many many different in backgrounds of the Mars One applicants because we do all come from different backgrounds. I mean, I I left school because I was bullied. I left school early, so my education level, though I was in all the top groups when I did leave, I couldn't go through with my exams and everything else. But you know, to, um, to most, I'm a tax driver with no education behind me. Whereas there again. We've we've got some very very educated people within the mass candidates, the round two ones. So uh, there's a lot of competition there, I think. But I'm looking forward to that. I can I can prove I can, I can learn, and that's that's one of the big challenges. And I'm really really looking forward to that. Me too. You must have more questions to ask me, Heidi. Come on. <laughs> um, yeah, so I uh, understand you used to be a taxi driver. Um, yeah, I'm sure you've had some interesting stories to tell about that. I, I'm actually still a taxi driver now, Heidi. I still do that. I do. I work that about 70 hours a week, which is a lot of hours working time. But yeah, I mean, I've got some wonderful stories about taxi, and but then I've got I've got some terrible stories as well. But we won't go into that. Um, yeah, I mean, Friday and Saturday nights carrying some of these drunk people about the stories that they come out with, you would not believe. And I probably could write me on book alone just on on the things that's happened during taxi in. But um, I'm trying to think of a really funny story for you. Uh, um, I can't. <laughs> My mind's gone blank. Why is it in these situations your mind sometimes goes blank? Um, I've been. We'll we'll talk talk about some of the 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 saddest sides of it. Of um, I've actually been knocked out with a baseball bat to be robbed. I've had a knife at my throat. Um, I've been threatened to be beat up and raped and things like that, but I go on. Now, funny sides, I'm still trying to think of some of the funny, funny stories. There's, there's loads of them as well. Oh, my goodness. Oh. No, we'll pass on that one for now, Heidi. <laughs> I'll come back.
come back to that, you know, my mind's gone blank, I can't think of any funny stories about taxiing. Um, no. Next question, please. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, and I re remember you mentioning that um, you had a, some kind of welder's license, and I bet that would be um, useful. It would, yeah. Um, when when I was younger, I was a, what's called a plate welder. Um, I am a qualified welder, and I used to do a lot of structural work. So yeah, if there's any welding and um, fabricating and that to be done on Mars, here's your girl. Have you ever seen the uh, film Flashdance, Heidi? Flashdance? I don't think I've seen that one. You should watch it, and when, when you see that gal running about with that welding torch, think of me. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. I might read it sometime. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's one of these um, dance movies, to be honest with you, yeah, but it's all a bit of fun. But, yeah, um, that's what I used to look like with my welding torch and my welding mask and everything else, but I was a man at the time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think I think that will come in the handy on Mars. I, you know, I've got an engineering background, and yeah, I I can I can still do it. I mean, it was only it was a couple of years ago that I actually um, constructed the, some big wrought iron gates because somebody was getting broken into, and I I made them from scratch, weld and them all together and everything for them and. So I've made a photo around the house, and yeah, so I've still got it in me. I can still do it. So, hmm. Awesome. I'm trying to think what else I'd like to ask you, and I can't. <laughs> um. No, you see, we've been closed up quite a lot now, aren't we, with what we can say. I did an interview today. I don't know if you've seen it online, have you? Uh, not yet, I don't think. Uh, I posted it in the uh, Aspiring Martians group and got a few comments on it. Um, good article, um, News Weekly it is, um, here in the UK. So... Yeah, well, it was about Chris Hatfield, about him saying that it's never going to happen, and then um, Elton Musk as well, and then me. So, uh, Mars One is back in the news again, so that's good. Yeah. Yeah, so that what is you, a good thing. Yeah, um, what do you think about everybody dissing Mars One, you know, saying it's never going to happen? How do you feel about that? Um... What I think is um, people didn't uh, think we were really going to go to the moon when uh, the whole Apollo thing was going on, so uh, it just shows you never know what could happen. I think they could pull exactly. it off. Exactly. They, they said that 10 years before the Apollo, they said there is no way that we'll ever get to the moon, didn't they? And we're only 10 years behind, aren't we now? So... We're, we're planning in, on going in nine years' time from now. So, yeah, we can do this. Yeah, it, yeah, it helps to have a positive attitude about it, I think. You've got to have a positive attitude, because if you don't, we'd never move anywhere, would we? Probably not. <laughs> no. Oh. Are you going to ask me any scientific questions so I can say, Hi Dave, I've got no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. hmm. what kind of scientific discoveries do you think we'll make on Mars? Well, I don't know, but that is one thing that really excites me because I know, I know my background with space and everything is very, very little, but... One thing that has always fascinated me is alien life, and I would love for us to get up there. And as we'd be no threat to alien life, because there'd be no danger for them, 
maybe they will come and contact us. That excites me. I hope we can find out that there was previous life on Mars. I mean, that would excite everybody if we could prove that once upon a time there was 100% life on Mars. I mean, that, that would be fantastic to find out. That would be neat. Mm. Yeah, and could you imagine if you were the first person ever to, to find that? I mean, what a buzz you'd get off that, wouldn't you? That'd be better than a lager and lamb, wouldn't it? Sure would. <laughs> so, I'm trying to think how, what else we could talk about. Um, this. 663 of us now, wouldn't they left? Yeah, apparently there's been some dropouts. Yeah, yeah, I've no idea why, why or where or anything else, because that, that hasn't been named yet, but, you know, it's, it's, the number's coming down and the, the next figure's quite, quite a drastic drop. How, how do you feel? Because I feel this. Next part is the hardest part we've had to do yet. I think it's even harder than the medical side of it. You know, this this is going to really determine. We're going down to, they've, they've said 100 um, in an interview I did with Hollywood TV. Um, I don't know if you watched it while it was on air, but Dr. Kraft was involved with the, um, the show. And it, it stated that we're going to drop to 100 now. That's a big drop. How do you feel about that? Um, well, uh, I think it just means they're um, uh, trying to get it down to a reasonable number. Um, I still like my chances. Um, how do you feel about your chances? I'm giving it all I've got, Heidi. I'm giving it 100% and hopefully that will get me through. But it is, it's a difficult round and... I mean, everybody, even even in the 663, are awesome people from from what I've seen, what I've read about them. Um, when I've met them either in person or online, all awesome people, but this is really going to take it down to the elite, and let's hope I can be one of them. I hope so, too. We will meet. I'm sure we will. I've said this right from the beginning. I mean, I've, I've talked to you quite a lot, and it would be absolutely fabulous to meet you, Heidi. And let's let's hope that very soon we, we will be meeting. Yeah. Yeah, it would be nice. Um, yeah, yeah, I remember I said to you on Facebook that uh, maybe we could... Even if we don't make it all the way, maybe we can have a beer together sometime. I'm sure that could be arranged sometime, yeah. But I, I think um, we've got a good chance of getting there, and let's stay positive, and we'll, we'll meet further on in the Mars One process. Yep, let's stay positive. Um, uh... And I have a feeling if uh, not, uh, one of us doesn't make it, um, we could see each other on Mars someday anyway. That's right, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, it's once once the first, first ones start going, it's going to get easier and easier anyway for people to go. It's just in initially proving that we, we can return life on Mars. And once those pe first people start going up, it, it'll become more possible for other people. So, yeah, yeah, let's um, go with that one. Yep. Are you still with me? Uh, I'm still here. I, I was just thinking for a sec. <laughs> Yeah, so... How do, how do you think other people find the fact that I'm transgender then? Do you, 
you know, because sometimes I often wonder about that. Hmm. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I... Yeah, I... I mean, I know you aren't, haven't got a problem with it, but some, some, sometimes, I mean, in, in the past, the candidates that was sort of anti it, as far as I know, they've gone now anyway. He obviously wasn't right for the programme. And hopefully the, the people who are left haven't got a problem with it. Right. I, I think the ones who do will probably drop out eventually. They, they will have to get with me and find out um, that I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be their loss, not yours. Well, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at headphones, by the way. Hmm? I can't. I can't believe Heidi. I'm doing this. On my mobile phone, sat on the stairs. <laughs> I mean, what a way to be interviewed, really, isn't it? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of funny, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But obviously, I had trouble um, with Skype last week. Obviously, the room that I'm in is not picking the uh, Wi Fi up. I obviously know that now. It's not getting the Wi-Fi in here, in there. Maybe the walls are too thick or something like that. I don't know. But I'm glad on this in, this interview tonight, I found that out. Because, you know, it's a, some important things coming up and I need a good connection for it, so... <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, red. Yeah, I'm hoping they do um, the interviews with... Uh, Google Hangouts because I've had troubles with Skype too. Yeah, yeah. I think it all def depends on the night, the strength and everything of your Wi-Fi. You know, sometimes it's not as strong. Yeah, yeah. I think if that happens, I'll just move my uh, laptop closer to my Wi-Fi loud um, router because uh, I think that helps sometimes. Yeah, I think that's what I've done now. I've obviously moved closer to where where it's situated, and yeah, since since I've done that, it's not been too bad. Yeah. So. So. Uh, I think you kind of got uh, garbled there. Right. Am I shouting too loud? Uh. Yeah, it's all right. Um, sometimes when Wi-Fi, um, the streaming video just isn't as smooth. I think. No, no. How how many interviews have you done now, Hardy? Am I your uh, second? Is that correct? Um. Well, I think you're the like the third Mars One candidate I've interviewed. Um, I've done Cody Reader and Leonard Lopen before. Right, I saw Curtis, yeah, I did see Curtis, that was, that was good. Mm -hmm. Enjoyed that. And who did you do before that? Because I, I think I've missed it. Um, well, Cody Reader and um, Leonard Lopen, I believe. Right, no, I haven't seen that. I'll have to check that one out. Mm, yeah. Mm. So, the next stage is, hopefully, we will be talking more on that we're further on. Yeah, I hope so. It'll be neat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. Who, who are you planning on interviewing next, then? Um, I haven't decided yet. No. Hmm. Maybe you should decide now and then approach them and they can't get out of it, can they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you, know, do you know who you should interview? Who? Go for Rob Parker. Rob Parker? Yeah, go for him. <laughs> okay, I'll try you. I'll try <laughs> that. 
I want to learn more about him. It's a bit of a dark horse's role, but I want to learn a little bit more about him. So if you can grab him on an interview, um, maybe we'll be able to pull a few things out of him. <laughs> I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just say so Melissa said, you are my next interviewee. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Rob Parker, I'll make a note of that. <laughs> yeah, do, do it. Um, it's, it's always commenting and liking and that in the Aspiring Martians group, so you won't be hard to find him. I'm sure. Yeah, I think I've seen him around. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's got a... I don't know, I, I always look at his profile picture, I'm probably totally wrong, but he always reminds me of an American policeman or something like that, but he's not, he's English. I don't, I don't know, it's just his profile picture with his hat and his uniform. It just reminds me of a, an American policeman, but I don't think it is. Yeah, there he is. Yeah, he does kind of look like an American policeman. It is it's not just me, is it? Nope. So, yeah, go grab him because he's very secretive. And like I say, I have met him once. I met him in London. But he doesn't give a lot away, Rob. So let's, let's see if we can pull some... Um, of his character out of him, because I would like to know. Yep. I'd say I'd like to learn more about, uh, about him myself, because I like knowing about my fellow Mars One candidates, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. So have you any more questions, Daddy? I don't think so. Not on my end. But thanks, Melissa. It's not a problem, Hardy. Anytime. I'm always here to chat to, whether it's interview or, or just privately, personally, or whatever. Always around, as you know. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'll stop the broadcast now, if that's all right with you. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs>